I think we're going to get this thing started. It's about 12 o'clock. Yeah, I appreciate everyone that is able to be here today um, helping out. Hopefully, this will be a, a quick but also informative little lesson that we're having today. Plantar fasciitis is what we're going to be talking about. Um, it is a very common thing that we're going to have. So just uh, a little bit, uh, I'm Jason DeVries, one of the uh, foot and ankle providers that works at Baycare Clinic. Uh, specifically, I work in Manitowoc as well as Green Bay. Um, I'm not uh, wearing a mask here today. I'm in an isolated room uh, away from, from everyone else here. Otherwise, we certainly do uh, wear a mask and take all the protocol and precautions that we need to for COVID-19 during this time. Uh, just as a matter of housekeeping, what we're, we're dealing with here as well. Um, I'm going to be looking at the uh, screen here, trying to talk. Obviously, it's a bit difficult not having any feedback here. But on the other side here, I also have uh, the ability to take some questions. So if there are uh, questions or people have any um, things that they would like uh, answered uh, during our live stream, you should be able to uh, call in or not call in, but uh, type in any questions. We'll answer them um, either as they are appropriate or uh, at the end of it. Uh, whatever works the best uh, while we're doing this. All right, so just as a uh, matter of housekeeping here, what are we going to do today? We're going to talk about the plantar fascia is a uh, common uh, problem, a common issue that a lot of people have. Um, we just want to make sure that everyone's aware of the anatomy and the function that it does. Uh, and then talk about the pathology, the, the itis aspect of the inflammation and what people are coming in to see. And then we'll run through some of the uh, treatments. Uh, we are going to focus on uh, some of the clinical simple things. These are the things that will be able to be done at home, uh, things that we can do to prevent having to come in to see the uh, provider, and then kind of going on to the more complicated things and invasive things. Certainly, there are some surgery. I am going to focus a bit on one of the surgical interventions that we do. Um, obviously, technology and literature is always expanding. Uh, most recently, there's been a very important paper looking at some of the benefits of uh, surgery over a simple injection. We'll just kind of talk about what that means and, and what that is, because that's a little, something that is, is new and current right now. So uh, just as a point, what is the plantar fascia? Uh, it's a thick kind of gristle-like substance. The way I explain it to people always is think about it almost like the string on a bow. It'll connect from the heel to the toes. Basically, it'll uh, support the arch of your foot. So, when you're standing down instead of just flattening right back out, the plantar fascia will actually help hold some of the tension there. Like I said, just like the strand and bow. There are a couple of different sections here um, central, medial, and lateral. Most often, the one that we run into an issue with is along the center portion uh, or the medial section. So, people will complain of heel pain, not just you know directly along the bottom side of their heel, but actually usually a bit more along the inside. Um, just like we talked about, it connects along this area. The reason I want to show uh, this image, uh, as well as to kind of show how the Achilles tendon is coming down here, we're going to talk a bit about Achilles tendon pathology and some of the tightness that's with the, the tendon along the back of your heel. These really do work uh, side by side with each other and in connection. So when there's a problem with one, very often there is a problem with another one as well. Uh, it also helps straighten out the toes. So what you'll see is a lot of times when people sit, their toes will be kind of curled up. As soon as they stand on the ground, they stand down. There's a mechanism that the plantar fascia uses to actually straighten those out called the windless mechanism. Again, just kind of showing that there's so many different interconnecting parts within the foot. It's not just, hey, my heel hurts, but there's a pretty significant interconnected area uh, where all these things have to work in concert with each other in order to provide a foot that's going to function do the things that it needs to do. So what is the fasciitis? Well, it is far and away the most common thing that walks in my office. People say they have, they have heel pain. And what we'll do at first is try to rule out all the other potential issues with it because it is such a common thing. The other common name people will call it is heel spur syndrome, which is totally fine. And it totally is a reasonable thing to do. I tend to shy away from it because I think it focuses too much on the heel spur. You're going to see that other than for uh, surgery, the heel spur is not always a big issue. People a lot of times will have it. They'll very often be asymptomatic. Once we do get into the surgical aspect, trying to figure out what is the best way to fix this, or people are having more pain directly along the center aspect of their heel, that's when we'll start focusing a little bit more along the spur. 
the specific pain that you're having um, is an inflammation or swelling. That's why when we talk about ice is usually what I do recommend. But realistically, I tell people it's like tearing. Okay, there's small little tears along the bottom side of their foot. When you're walking around uh, warm, warming up, a lot of times it doesn't bother you, but when it heals up, it can heal up very tight. It's usually not a rupture where we'll feel a big pop or a snap that can happen, but almost like a small little longitudinal tear. So instead of like popping like this, they'll almost fray and become a little bit wider or thicker. And that's why you see some thickening when we look at this under ultrasound and other things like that. So what do we see? Usually people do not have a specific time where they say, hey, you know, I, I did this activity or I did this exercise or I had this uh, injury and this is where I've had the problem. More often it's a gradual vague onset where people start to notice some heel pain and then they start to notice it get worse in the morning. They'll usually go on for a while before they start worrying about it. Then people will try some of the simple treatments, uh, but just continue to kind of progress it on. Now, there are certain things that we look for when people come in to see if we can identify it. You know, are, are people wearing uh, the wrong shoes? Are they, is there gain in weight, change in job, change where they're standing? Sometimes people get moved around from one area of the factory to another. And, you know, now they're either standing more or they're standing on a harder surface or they don't have a mat. There's a lot of different things that can bring it on. Sometimes we can identify them. Sometimes we cannot. Uh, but it is something we, we look for. One of the big signs that we're always looking for is the first step in the morning pain, because that is one of our big differentiators from the other pathology that can be happening to plantar fasciitis. You know, we'll be talking about heel pain, things like that. And the question I always ask, how's that first step in the morning? Most often patients will react uh, pretty strong, like, oh my gosh, I feel like uh, an old man or a old lady walking around, I'm limping around can't hardly get out of bed. And that's, that's a common thing we see. And what's going on is those heels, those, uh, excuse me, those, those tears in the heel, um, heal in a, in a shorter area, right? So your plantar fascia is now uh, captured like this when it stretches out and flattens back out, you're tearing those things again. And this is a, a fancy word is called post-static dyskinesia. And the heel spur is something that will happen with a lot of people. So chronic inflammation, tearing, irritation, it will bring blood to the area. Uh, there's also some tension on the area. One of the ways that our bones work is through something called Wolf's Law, where basically bones will react to the tensions or to the uh, stresses that are applied to them. So a heel spur is a very common thing. You'll see that in people that have problems and also people that uh, don't have problems. So although we do look at it, we evaluate it, I always do get x-rays across the area. Um, it is often a secondary concern because again, you can see it uh, with or without pain. As we talked about before, uh, the Achilles tendon is uh, integrally important to this. If you, again, you kind of look at how this area is, a tight Achilles tendon is one of the main things that we're, we're gonna evaluate and look at because a tight Achilles tendon will put a lot of stress uh, along the front of your foot. When the front of your foot has a lot of stress, your body tries to accommodate it by flattening out the arch to bring the heel back down across that area. And that again, will put a lot of stress along that plantar fascia or that uh, strain of the bow kind of uh, aspect to it. So it's one of the major things we look for. I would say of the patients that end up going to surgery, a tight Achilles tendon uh, that is not able to get better with stretching or physical therapy is probably the number one thing that I see is the underlying cause uh, that is making us not be able to get this area fully better with simple conservative measures. Okay, so who gets it? Uh, essentially everyone. I have people all, all the time comes in and say, hey, is it, is it my job? Is it my shoes? Is it my weight? Well, sure. I mean, all, all these things can be a contributing factor, but I tell people, I see this in young and old people, uh, heavy and light people. I see people that are wearing high heels all the time and, and runners that are wearing good, shields all, good shoes all the time. It is just a common thing. And like we said before, very often we can't find a specific injury or specific event that caused this. That being said, it is more common with certain things in heavier patients, in patients that are standing all day on concrete is especially a difficult thing, or if they're wearing bad shoes. Sometimes people can identify, hey, I, you know, I did this event and since that time it's been a problem. But the point is, it is very common, although we'll try to identify things that come, can come across or can cause it. I usually tell patients, don't, don't beat yourself up too much. This is, a, this is something that will happen routinely. 
And one thing we want to always make sure, and you got to be careful not to get tunnel vision, because again, the most common thing that goes in my office is you got to make sure we rule out other things. That is why I do get x-rays when patients come in. Uh, there's not always an x-ray finding. Sometimes a heel spur, sometimes not, but I always do get it because it's not always that. You can have nerve entrapment, you can have stress fractures, spur fractures. Sometimes as people get older, they lose fat where they need it and gain fat where they don't want it. You can have uh, the cushion underneath the heel just become a problem. And then big issues like tumors for infections. That's the x-ray we have here. This is a patient that presents with heel pain, um, but the entire heel has been uh, overtaken with a tumor and that is that needs to be recognized right away. And so that's why I always get x-rays, even on the first visit for people with heel pain. So what do we do about it? The treatment plan I tell patients is relatively comprehensive. And what we'll do is we'll go through the simple things um, or your part. And I tell people, this is your homework. So no matter what else we do, these are the things that you need to do on your own um, and need to continue to do on your own, regardless of the treatment that we may do. After it gets a bit more difficult, uh, it's my part, right? So we'll talk about some of the interventions that we can do in the office, you know, some of the clinical things we can do that are more than just icing, stretching, things like that, but at the same time, simple things. Typically at this point, I talk about surgery, but I'm gonna add one today, just talking about regenerative medicine. This is an area of medicine that is becoming bigger and I think has a lot of roles in chronic inflammation, chronic irritation, which is what we're dealing with with plantar fasciitis. So your part, wear good shoes. That's the first thing I'm gonna look at. Do you have good support on your, on your feet? If people come in uh, wearing flip-flops that are flat and no support, or people say, hey, I like to walk around at my house with no shoes on, that is gonna be one of the first things we look at. And we're gonna pair those good shoes usually with a pair of orthotics or inserts. These are arch supports, inserts, inserts orthotics. Um, when people come in, we'll always look at what kind of orthotics they have as well. We want something that's stiff and supportive. Why? We want something to support the arch so that your plantar fascia doesn't have to be the only supporting structure doing that. Typically, a gel is not what we're looking for with this, even though it makes sense. Hey, it hurts on my heel. Why don't I cushion my heel? In this particular case, it's actually not that helpful. We can get them either over the counter, and there's a number of different good brands with that, or sometimes people do need custom orthotics. Anti-inflammatories are going to be a part. I tell people to take uh, ibuprofen or naproxen to leave. Sometimes if people can't tolerate that to their stomach, Tylenol is, is okay as well. And what I'll say is early on, uh, take it consistently. Most often, myself included, I take medications when I have pain and when I don't, I, I don't take them. In this particular case, early on, I tell people to take it consistently. If you take it once, that's good for pain. If you take it consistently, uh, throughout the time, it'll actually prevent some of the inflammation. So it's not simply covering up the pain that people have. It's actually reducing the inflammation, which is important when we're talking about a chronic or chronically torn issue like plantar fasciitis. Icing and massage is important as well. A lot of times people say, hey, I've been rubbing a tennis ball on it. I actually prefer to take a 20 ounce bottle of water, freeze it, and then roll that underneath. So what they'll do is they'll give you some of the massage and some of the stretch that you have from the tennis ball, but also give you some icing and, and give you something to Calm down the inflammation as well. Stretching is important. Uh, if you look at the bottom screen, uh, or the bottom picture rather, that's stretching your Achilles tendon. People do a wall push stretch. Uh, anything where you're feeling stretched along the back of your calf is important because again, this needs to be addressed. In addition to stretching your Achilles, though, I do recommend people specifically stretch their plantar fascia. The way I recommend it is, you know, the top screen here, but actually taking your affected foot over the knee and then take the same hand as the affected foot and pull up on the toes like you see here. And what you'll find is there'll be a little band underneath the area. You'll engage the plantar fascia, but stretch it out without tearing it. Doing those two things that are really important early on. And, and actually, even when we start doing treatment in the office, will be something we want to continue on with. A nice one uh, is one of the things that people come to me. Now, you can find these over the counter as well. Um, sometimes people will have them. The other name is called a Strasburg sock. You can have a night's nice like this where it stretches along the front. I like that because it allows people to walk on it. You can also have it along the back, which can be a little bit more powerful, a bit more controlling. So there's a number of them out there. If people have not tried those, one of my first lines uh, that I recommend to keep everything stretched out. The biggest issue I have with these though is compliance. Um, people simply do not like wearing a splint on their feet at night. And if they don't do that, Sometimes it's not worth giving it to people because if you're not going to wear it, it's not going to help. So we just try to kind of weed that out so that we're not wasting anybody's time or money. Physical therapy is probably one of my favorite treatments. 
Um, it's more than just stretching and strengthening. What they'll do is they'll do some of the deep tissue massage, like you see over here, ultrasound massage to break up some of these deep fibrous tissues. Antiparesis is another way to get medications in there, but without using a needle. And then something called dry needling, which is not nearly as bad as it, it sounds, a way to kind of stretch out that area, decompress or release some of the spasms people may have along the pathway. And then the big one is an injection, um, a steroid or a cortisone injection to the painful heel. Very often provided people have done some of their due diligence at home, uh, we will recommend an ultrasound guided injection. Historically, we just did this blind. We'd go in, we'd identify where the pain is and then inject. Very painful injection because you're injecting directly into the plantar fascia. I now do this all under ultrasound so we can identify exactly where the plantar fascia is. And we actually inject around the area to surround the area of medication rather than in directly into the plantar fascia. After that, we'll get into the regenerative medicine. Now, this is some of the same stuff, but rather than covering it up with an anti-inflammatory, we're actually trying to get some healing phases to this. And there's a couple of different regenerative options that we have. Uh, certainly, I do some of them. We also have a non-operative provider in our clinic that's here in Green Bay, as well as uh, Manitowoc, that will focus in, and specialize in regenerative medicine. So there are a number of different options, but very often I'll defer to him as well. PRP or platelet-rich plasma is one that you'll hear a lot of. People will take their own blood out of their arm, spin it down, focus it, uh, get it concentrated into some of the healing factors, then inject it back into the area. Again, this is typically done under ultrasound. Procedure people have heard about maybe is called Tenex or a fast procedure. This can be done not only at the plantar fast, but the Achilles, the elbow, um, knee, pelvic tendons. There's a lot of different areas that, that can be done. What this is specifically doing is basically taking like a specialized rotor rooter under ultrasound, identify the area that's swollen, painful, partially torn, and actually remove some of that inflamed or irritated tissue. This can be very beneficial to actually get rid of it if we see a big, thickened, uh, painful area. And then stem cells or amniotic uh, tissue, you'll see a lot of this stuff being advertised. What we're trying to do realistically is in, inject some of these cells that can go on to any type of different tissue. They're typically live or viable cells that are injected into the area to try to regenerate some of this chronically damaged or irritated tissue. Which is gonna drain, drain us to traditional surgery. So before we get to traditional surgery, I typically have expected people to have gone through a trial of most all or at least some of the, these issues, again, in certain extenuating circumstances or chronic issues, you may move a little bit faster with this. Um, but usually this is a, a condition where we want to get through all the conservative measures because a lot of patients can get better without. And I talked a little bit about some recent literature showing where surgery does have actually some significant benefits in the short and long term over uh, conservative measures or over injections. But the thing I tell patients is that's not really comparing apples to apples. An injection is something you come in, you can see me, I do it, you go on with your life. Surgery is simply not that. There is a recovery time. There's some added complexity uh, alliance. So although you can feel confident that surgery works very well and works longer, that's still not something that I typically want to run into because it does require some downtime. There are smaller surgeries though, um, good literature. And this is what I actually do the majority of the time if there's not a large spur along the body, but something called a microtonotomy and, and pictured right here. So this is surgery where we don't do an actual over incision. We don't have any sutures. Rather, we make a grid of uh, a, a grid of dots along the bottom of your foot, essentially along the entire area where the plantar fascia hurts. This can be small or large, depending on where the patients are having. I like that aspect will have a small uh, poke hole that goes through the skin as well as the plantar fascia. Then we use a special device, it's called a radio frequency ablator, but a small device to actually go in and essentially cauterize the plantar fascia in multiple areas. This will help stimulate healing by promoting uh, new growth of the blood vessels, may remove some of the uh, chronically irritated nerves, and basically take this into an acute irritation, which the body does tend to heal better than a chronically irritated plantar fascia. Traditionally, a uh, partial release can be done as well. This can be done either in an open fashion with an incision and, and where we specifically look at the plantar fascia, or it can be done arthroscopically. We'll take a camera and we'll identify the area. And typically, we'll release either part 
um, either one third or one half of the plantar fascia, depending on where the area is irritated. But again, this can be done in a measured device looking specifically at it. And this is what I'm doing more uh, traditionally, especially if people have um, spurs along the bottom side of their foot. This is where the literature is pointing right now, where patients will have better long-term outcomes, especially if there's a symptomatic spur along the area. This is a more traditional arthroscopy. We'll stick a camera into the foot, we'll identify the plantar fascia, we'll remove any inflamed area, and actually usually we'll trim down the plantar fascia as well as it is often inflamed or thickened along the area. Then through that same device, we actually go in and remove the spur along the area. This is just below the area of the plantar fascia, which is where the camera will be. And looking directly at it, we'll remove the spur, then confirm it utilizing x-rays in surgery so we can have this uh, be removed. This is the current uh, state of the art where we have good, uh, we'll call level one evidence. Level one means this has been reviewed. It is scientifically sound and does have a lot of backing up so that you can feel that you can trust the results. Now this is starting again. So we would expect that more literature will come out and time will tell. Again, it has excellent favorable results, but not really uh, the same thing as comparing it to an injection. So injection, although maybe doesn't work quite as well as this, is still often one of the things I'll do early on. Additional procedures, we've talked a lot about the Achilles tendon. And when people come in, if they are not able to alleviate the tightness along the Achilles tendon, we may do a release across this area as well. This can be done either open or arthroscopically. Again, this is done, I would say, probably about 50% of the time for plantar fascial irritation, just to get that area uh, alleviated so that there's not that chronic tension. That's so what do I say here? Uh, plantar fasciitis is common, very common uh, in, in all people, but especially if people are standing on uh, hard floors for a long time, on concrete, any that different issues like this, um, we'll look for an underlying cause of it. Early treatment uh, first starts with you and then is still in the clinic with me. And in some cases, surgery can be done if necessary. Uh, we'll try to identify what specifically is wrong and then specifically address those issues. All right, so I thank you for your time. Uh, there were a couple of questions that came through here, uh, some of which we answered a bit. Do most issues heal without needing surgery? Um, the short answer is yes. Uh, most often we can treat this without surgery. But that doesn't mean doing nothing at all. So although we're gonna to try to avoid surgery, there is a lot of underlying stuff with the stretching, icing, medications that you'll do as part of your own treatment. And then there are a lot of conservative things in clinic we can do. The first and foremost of one is usually an injection. Physical therapy works, I'd say about as well, but takes a little bit longer to, to take place. Another question here. Um, I'm on my feet all day, and what can I do with health symptoms while working? And again, that's uh, that's a common thing. So we'll start with just what we talk about conservatively, good supportive shoes. Make sure that if you're wearing uh, boots or steel toes, you have them that are relatively new. People that are on concrete all the time, even with expensive boots, they do wear out over time. We'll pair that then with an orthotic or an insert. Again, not necessarily a gel, but we want to arch support to allow us to take some attention off the job that the plantar fascia is doing. If you have the availability to have a mat or a cushioned mat, if you're standing on concrete all day, a lot of times that can help. Uh, when you're taking a break uh, between, if you can take, uh, if you can massage your feet a little bit, take ibuprofen or leave during the time uh, while you're at work, we can kind of plan, right? So if you wake up in the morning, you have a little bit of pain, but it's not really hurting as you go into work, Maybe take some medications, Tylenol, Aleve, ibuprofen before you go into work because you know that uh, when you start your job, you're going to start irritating and, and taking some uh, pressure along this area. And those are just simple things you could do to try to alleviate it. That doesn't get uh, that doesn't get you where you need to be. Some nice customer thoughts may be necessary or injections like we talked about. All right. Well, it looks like we don't have any further questions. Uh, about 15 20 minutes and going to the 24 minute mark. I do appreciate uh, everyone's time. Um, I would be here to answer any questions if you have them. We have the number for the clinic uh, available. Appreciate the time that you have. Please, everyone, stay safe out there, and we will see you if there's an issue. Thank you very much.